So good morning, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, my thought for you that has been kind of progressing through this week is I've been talking a lot about working with your hands, right? And engaging with the world that's right in front of you. And this is a big one for yogis because our tendency is, is that we think through this practice is that we're going to make the world be the way we want it to be, right? And sometimes that's what we hear in our messages that, you know, be the change you want to see in the world, or you are the light of the world, and you're creating this through your mind. And therefore, if you can just master this, then you will change the outside world and it will be what you want it to be. And that is where we get stuck. And we make the mistake of thinking that that's how this practice works. And um, the reminder that we are able to engage with what's in front of us, that that's what it means is that, yeah, you can influence the world through the practice that you're doing internally, but you don't influence it by making it what you want it to be, is you start to find how you already have this synergistic connection with the world as it is, right? You start to find where the world actually empowers you and you empower the world. And we have this relationship of giving and receiving, right? That we already fit into this um, motion of the world that was happening before we were born. So the yogis say, it's happening before you were born, it will continue after you are done with this body, right? Is that that energy is in motion already and you enter into it and you empower it and it empowers you. And then when you are done with your interaction in this form is that that dissolves back to where it came from and you begin again, right? The energy is constantly in that state of uh, emerging, right? Always emerging. So where I've been going in my mind is this sort of progression from engaging with the world in front of you as it is without trying to make it what you want, but instead saying, here's what's in front of me. And this is the way that I can serve because this is who I am. This is how I can serve the world. This is how I'm empowered by it. But to take that to the next step of the yogi's mind that says not only that, but I will take what the world is giving me and I will use that as my teaching, right? Without question. So where my mind has been and where it, 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 this happens with my Dharma talks often is where I start it, it goes where I don't expect it to. And then that becomes the next place to land. So it occurred to me um, in the last week or, you know, as I've been talking about this engaging with the world as it is, that we have in the teachings this opportunity to choose what is maybe our hardest or most difficult experience as our teachers. And the representation we have for this kind of is the Kata Upanishad, where literally death is chosen as the teacher, right? Death is the guru. And so there's the opportunity in our life at any time that we can seek out what we think our, um, our empowerment is going to be. And we often reach for what we think is brighter than us and greater than us and what we aspire to. But the yogi or the human being can also choose to say what's in front of me right now is a lot of dissolving. What's in front of me right now is a lot of destruction. What's in front of me right now is a lot of death. What's in front of me right now is a lot of fear. That also can be my teaching because that is not different from separate from all of the lighter, brighter things that we like to associate with our practice. It's not different from that. So everything that's in life in front of you right now can empower you but it can only empower you if you draw it close to you and you draw yourself close to it, if you engage with it. If you keep it off to the side and say, I just have to get through this while it's over there, or I don't touch it, but I get through it, hoping that it'll just go away, is that doesn't cause us to wake up inside anymore, right? So this is my suggestion is that your practice is that you choose whatever is right in front of you to be your teacher. And if what's right in front of you right now is fear, you choose that, fear is my teacher. And if it's anger, anger is my teacher. If it's grief, grief is my teacher. If it's death, death is my teacher, right? And the Upanishads, the sort of meaning of it is that you sit close to or you sit at the feet of your teacher, right? So you bring it close to you. So to see that, whatever the world is giving you as that same flow of abundance that when it's at its brightest and you love what's happening, and right now, if there's a lot of things that you don't love that are happening, it's the same flow of energy. The abundance has not shifted. But if it stops empowering you and you stop empowering the world in the best and most uh, enlightening way that you can, then that relationship of giving and receiving starts to falter, it starts to fall apart. And this is where our abundance then disappears. That's the Lakshmi teachings, right? If you cannot take what's in front of you and value it, be empowered by it, 
then that energy of abundance disappears. It feels like it is no longer yours. So we practice to come back to that. And that means that we draw close to us whatever it is that is that the world is giving us as our teacher. So comfortable seat if you're not there already. Right? What does it mean to sit at the feet of your guru? Whatever you associate the meaning of that word with, whatever your teachings are, whatever is empowering you in this lifetime. What does it mean to sit at the feet of, to bow your head to, to empty yourself in front of and say, teach me, I don't know. I don't know how to be in this world the way that it is right now. Mind doesn't know how, teach me. So with the eyes closed, just let yourself drop deep down into the pelvis. As you breathe, let your belly start to expand with every inhale. So again, you're dropping your awareness, that wideness down deeper into the body. So there's not so much of that feeling of holding yourself up. There's the dropping down. And the dropping down, continue to breathe wide into the base of your belly as best you can into your lower spine. Just hold your attention at the base of your spine, so really low down at the tailbone. Just hold your attention at the lowest part of your body, the darkest part of the body. And right here, can you ask yourself the question and don't think the answer, just feel it. Ask yourself the question, who am I? Then ask yourself the question, why am I here? If there's no useful answer that you feel coming, don't worry. Don't force it. But just start to feel the feelings that are there when you hold your attention deep in the pelvis. And just for a moment, you take a deep inhale. As you exhale all the way out, at the end of that exhale, start to squeeze and lift your pelvic floor. So from that low, low place of the pelvis, draw everything in towards the center and then draw that straight up. Like you're trying to bring your tailbone all the way up to your belly button. And then as you exhale or as you inhale again, let it go. So you take your full breath in. And then as you exhale again, at the end of that exhale, so the navel's drawing towards the spine already, start to squeeze in and up. So everything, all of those lower pelvic muscles, all of those sex organs muscles, bleh, sex organ muscles, squeeze in and pull up all the way up to your belly button. And then let it go. Do that one more time, full breath in. And as you exhale, start to draw in and up. So everything squeezes towards the center. Even it's like your hip bones are trying to roll towards the center of your belly and then pulling up all the way up internally all the way up and then let it go. And then bring your hands to your heart center, please, palm to palm. Again, letting the pelvis begin to get heavy and relax. We'll open with the sound of Om. Take a deep breath in. and let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys, you can release your hands, please. And then just stretch the arms all the way up alongside your ears. Good, interlace the fingers, press the heels of your hands up towards the sky. So pull up through your side waist. And again, do that little drawing in and up of the lower belly. So that's squeezing internally, lift the pelvic floor. So you feel yourself really pulling up through your spine. Good, nice. And then release that squeeze, bring the arms straight forward in front of you, still with the hands clasped, round into your back. So curl back through your shoulders, dropping the chin towards your chest. Good, and then inhale, come all the way back up, stretching the arms alongside the ears. 
Good, squeeze and lift, pull up through the pelvic floor, pull up through the lowest part of your belly, draw your ribs in, get taller through your spine, and then exhale again, rounding into the back, pressing the arms forward in front of you. Good, and then one more time, coming all the way up, stretching through the arms. Good, draw the ribs in, get taller, and again, squeezing in and up internally. So from the very base of you, squeeze everything and pull up. Pubis bone moves up to your belly button. Nice, and then slowly release. Take the arms all the way out and down. Walk your right arm out wide from your right hip. Good, bend the elbow just a little bit. Take your left arm over your ear, side body stretch. Good, so the further out you walk that right hand, the more space you have to start to bend the elbow and really drop into um, the gravity, stretching that left side body. So walk your hand out a little further, take up more space. There you go. It's funny, right? I can't take up too much space off of my mat. Take up all the space. Good. And then bring yourself all the way back up to center, please. Good. Bring the left hand out and wide from the left hip. Again, bending the elbow just a little bit. Take your right arm over your ear side, stretch the other direction. Nice, Andy. Good, Susan. Beautiful, Diane. And again, the more room you give yourself, the more you can drop that elbow, and the more you can feel stretch on that right side. And that's the thing is the more we embrace the wideness or the bigness of what the yogic teachings are is you have more space to really understand how to engage with the world. It doesn't stay in that narrow place of saying, I only know how to do it when it looks like this. I only know how to do it when it looks like that. Come all the way back up to center, please. Good, release the hands, roll forward onto hands and knees. planting the hands underneath the shoulders, knees under the knees, the hips, start to do hip circles and move the pelvis. And all of that pelvic floor stuff, right? This is root chakra. So the answers of who am I and why am I here and what am I supposed to do is we don't have to go up and out to find those things. We say, oh, your soul always knows. So great, telephone your soul. So how do you telephone your soul? You talk to your root. Because your root chakra, this embodiment is built off of, built from those deep desires of the soul. They're not separate from each other. It's not like you created a body or a body was given to you and it doesn't make any sense with your soul. As your soul said, this is exactly what you need. This is exactly what I need to experience this world in the way that I want to, in the way that is meaningful, in the way that is necessary. Move your hips the other way. So we think, how can I escape from what feels like it's dark or it's heavy or it's limited and I can deal with the world in that sort of distracted way? So our practice is to not try and distract ourselves, but to come back to where we are in that limited form and to engage with that, right? Your limitations are your teachers. Your struggles are your teachers. The way the world is right now, this is your teacher and you're not here by mistake. Come back to neutral, please. So back to hands and knees. Nice job. Stretch your right leg back behind you, toes tucked on the floor and cross that foot over towards the bottom left-hand corner of your mat. Look over your left shoulder, please, towards that heel. Good, press out through the heel. Keep your right hip lifted and wide. Nice. So we work with the root when there's a lot of fear going on because the root is the place where we comprehend what it's like to not just survive, but to actually be capable of maintaining our awareness of ourselves in a world that is scary, right? We don't have to know what's coming next, but the root is the place where we start to steady ourselves. I know who I am. And then start to bring that foot back behind you, please unwind. Good. Keep the leg extended though. Drop the heel flat to the floor. Take your right arm up to the sky now. So your right leg is still back behind you. Drop the heel to flat. Take your right arm up. Good. And lean your weight, left armpit forward over your left wrist a little more. So shift your weight forward. And then again, as you're pressing down through that left hand, can you feel yourself starting to suction up through your palm? So actually squeeze the uh, knuckles of the hands of the heel of the hand towards each other and draw energy up into that left shoulder. Nice. Now take the right arm all the way over your ear. Good. That right foot is still on the floor, but curl and round your ribs up towards the sky a little more. So like you're pushing your right hip up towards the ceiling and keep drawing energy up through your left arm. Good. 
and then go ahead and release, place back to hands and knees. Still just waking up, right? Take your left leg back behind you, toes tucked. Step that foot uh, across to the bottom right-hand corner of your mat, look over the right shoulder. Good, again, you're reaching out through the heel. Don't let that left hip drop low. It has a tendency to collapse. So lift the left side, low belly. Nice, curling into the ribs. Let the shoulders go wide away from your ears. Nice, Harriet, good. Got it, Allison, nice, Mia. And then come back to center, please. Bringing that left leg straight back in line with your hip. Good, drop the heel flat to the floor. So that baby toe is parallel to the back of your mat. Take the left arm up to the sky. Nice. And again, most of us, we tend to hang back into the legs here because that feels more stable. So move your weight forward, right armpit over right wrist. You're shifting your weight towards the top of your mat. Keep pressing into your feet though. Take the left arm over your ear. Good. So again, you're getting that full side stretch from armpit to hip and all the way down the length of the legs. And then start to, again, draw up through the wrist of that right arm. So you're actually pressing down through the pads of your fingers, the back of the knuckles. Start to squeeze up and in. Feel the heel of the hand and the uh, knuckles squeezing towards each other. Pull up through your right armpit. And then arch your ribs towards the sky. Push that left hip higher. Good. Nice, you guys. And then slowly release, coming back to hands and knees. Nice job. Find that same engagement of your hands on hands and knees. So now pressing both hands into the floor, feel thumb and first finger rotate down. So it's almost like you're rolling your hands inward. Weight is rolling inward. Good. And then feel your inner armpits, your inner elbows pressing wide. Nice. And now feel that suctioning again through the palms, pull up through your armpits. So feel your ribs lift because you're pulling up through the arms. Good, now tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog without losing that action of your hands. So as soon as your hips lift, most of us start to roll our weight back into the heels of the hands, don't do it. Shift your weight back towards the knuckles of the hands. Feel that little lift through the underside of your wrists. And then feel yourself drawing up, pulling the arm bones up and into the back of the heart. Nice, tops of the thighs go back, absolutely. Beautiful, you guys. Yeah, a really conscious downward facing dog that if this is the only pose that you do today, do it with your full attention. And it's gonna feel like it's difficult to be fully engaged with what's right here. But that is the practice is to keep your mind fully engaged with what's right here. Don't go into the fantasies, whether they're positive or negative. Good, you guys. Start to walk your feet forward towards your hands one step at a time. Good. And then grab a block. If you have a block, place a block between the upper thighs. Good. And then hands touching something if they can. So if you have two blocks and you need the second block underneath your hands, do that. Good. So the block is there not only to give you something to hug with the inner thighs, but to also give you space between the legs so the knees don't fall in. Right, you have something that's gonna help them stay a little wider. Lift and spread your toes. So the same thing you just did with your hands, do with your feet. So lift your toes up off the floor. Good, so you're pressing into your heels and feel that feeling of squeezing, like you're squeezing the ball of your foot and your heel towards each other, trying to get the arch of the foot to really wake up. Good, and then keep that action, bend your knees, drop your hips nice and low, butt goes backwards. Don't let your knees go forward, take your butt back. Yeah. And then draw that low belly in and up. You can even squeeze and lift the pelvic floor here. Nice. Good, you guys. Round into your back. Please drop your hips a little lower. And then start you with that roundness in your back. Take your hands behind your head. Yep. Good. And with your hands behind your head, lift your armpits wider. Start to press your back of your head into your hands. So it's like you're almost coming up into chair, but you're not fully coming up into chair. Just keep dropping your hips back and feel your belly rising up away from your thighs and your collarbones lifting up chest open. And now press your head back into your hands. Nice. And then release the hands back down to the floor and straighten your legs, standing forward fold. That's nice, Allison. Yeah, it feels like a lot of work. Good, Anastasia. Nice, you guys. So with the block still between the legs, take your right hand to your outer left ankle and then bring your left arm up to the sky. Good. Continue to press down into your feet and lift from the lowest part of your belly. Send your sacrum up towards the sky. Really nice, good Daniel. Nice, Maureen. 
Beautiful, you guys. Release back to center, please, and then take yourself the other direction. So left hand to outer right ankle or shin, right arm to the sky. Good, again, the block is there for you to have something to hug, to keep your legs awake. So don't let the inner thighs just go to sleep on you. Don't let your hips press backwards and your knees lock. Bring the weight forward towards the balls of your feet. Yeah, be in a place where you're not completely comfortable, where you actually have to engage with the pose. Nice, and then release both hands back down to the floor. Good job, place your block to the side. Really good, step your right leg back behind you. Nice long lunge. Good. Drop that knee down to the floor, please. Use a blanket underneath the knee if you'd like. Anjaneyasana, inhale both arms up to the sky. Good, lifting and spreading the toes of that front foot. So again, you anchor into your heel just a little bit more. And then take your right hand to your outer left knee. So it's, you're coming into a twist, start to turn your ribs to the left and then stretch your left arm straight back from the shoulder. So it's reaching towards the back wall. Good, let your hips move forward. Your front knee moves forward. So you go a little deeper into the lunge and then really reach through your left fingertips. So you pull your rib cage back. So your hips are going forward, but your ribs are moving back. So you're not leaning towards the front of your mat. If anything, it's like you're trying to reach back behind you for someone's hand. You're trying to reach back behind you for the thing that you forgot as you were leaving the door, right? Good. Take your pelvis forward, navel in, reach through that left arm and shoulder. Beautiful. And then unwind, sweep both arms forward and up alongside the ears. Squeeze the front heel and the back knee towards each other. Lift and squeeze pelvic floor. Squeeze in and up. Good. And then exhale, release everything, hands down to the floor. Beautiful. Move your right hip back in space. So it's on top of the right knee. Take your left leg to straight up on the heel. Ardha Hanumanasana. Good. Nice, you guys. And walk your hands forward any amount towards the heel, towards the ankle. Dig that left heel down to the floor and drag back. I love it even if you let your knee bend just a little bit especially because it's early in the class. So as your knee bends just a little bit, you can focus on actually sending your sit bones up and wide. So it's going to feel like you're almost arching your lower back, but I want you to really exaggerate that feeling of widening your sit bones. Good. Pressing the inner thighs wide and bending the knee is going to help you do that. Nice, you guys. Good, to choose what's right in front of you as your teacher is not easy. The Katu Upanishad is exactly that conversation. A young boy who goes to death to be his teacher and death says, what are you talking about? He says, I don't teach, I'm not a guru. The boy says, but to understand what is going on in the world, to understand what life is, I have to understand what death is. How can I not understand this? I'm supposed to understand the nature of what I am. Take one more breath here. And then start to walk your hands towards that baby toe side of the foot. Good. So any amount, both hands don't have to come to the baby toe, but just start to move your torso in that direction to the left. Good, keep your sacrum lifting up and back. Nice, don't let your hips go all the way with you. So press the inner thighs wide. Nice, Elisa. Good, Perry. Some melody. Good, you guys. Then walk your hands all the way back towards center, please. Beautiful. Drag that heel back, come back to the low lunge. Then lift your back knee. Walk both hands inside the front foot. Walk to your right until you come to the center of your mat. Prasarita Padottanasana. Good. Walking your hands forward in front of you so you're in like a wide legged downward facing dog. Good. And again, the minute I say down dog, you're like, oh, push back through my knees, push back through my hips. Walk your hands forward first, find your hands. Let your weight fall towards the balls of your feet. Let your weight fall onto your hands. Good, stop trying to avoid where you think you're weaker. <laughs> Press into your hands, feel the armpits lift. Good, feel that pressing down through the knuckles as though you are going to transition into an arm balance here. Press into your hands and then pull back through the tops of your thighs, lift your tailbone up and back and find your heels. So it's not a one or the other, I'm either in my feet or I'm in my hands, it's I'm in my feet and my hands. And both of them, all of them are supporting me. 
lift the back of your throat so that your shoulders are not now supporting the weight of your head, but your shoulders are engaged with, your head is engaged with the upper back. Good. Nice, you guys. Don't let your weight come out of your hands. Awesome. And then start to walk your hands all the way back towards the feet, please. Good, feel the legs squeezing towards each other. Keep walking your hands back underneath the legs. Start to walk your hands back behind your heels. You can turn the palms or turn the fingers if that feels better to you. But walk yourself underneath, almost like you're trying to fold completely under yourself. So you're dropping the head. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Lift the hips higher towards the sky. Nice, Valerie. Good, Daniel. You got it, guys. Beautiful. Squeeze the legs. Lift through the low belly. Good. And then walk yourself back towards center, please. Walk to the top of your mat. Left toes turn forward. Good. Spin your right heel up. And then as you come back, take that left leg up and back behind you into down dog split. Yep. Left leg up and back to down dog split. Good. Bend that knee. Kick your heel in towards your butt, please. Knee points down towards the floor. Good. Keep that low belly drawing in. Press your heel just a little higher towards the ceiling. And then draw back through the upper arms. Again, lift your collarbones forward and up. Take a little baby back bend here, keeping the tops of your thighs pulling back. So again, your weight is distributed. Beautiful. Nice. And then release the head. Extend the leg to straight, please. And then drop that left foot down, downward facing dog. Good. Come down to your knees, please. Child's pose think to yourself, was that a lot? That was a lot. That was a lot. Yeah. We were doing inversions with, uh, it's a TT weekend, teacher training weekend. We were doing inversions yesterday. So my mind is fired up in the direction of, <laughs> the direction of your inner empowerment, right? Because absolutely, there are moments when our practice is the soothing kind of, I need to go inward and I need to get quiet and I need to um, do a little bit of that space between me and the outside world. We do have to do that where we're not wrapped up in what's going on to the point that we can't catch our breath. But if we use our practice to hide from the world or to think that if we do the right thing, we can just get it to be the way that we want, or as soon as it is the way that we want, well, then I'll enter back in and do what I can. So when the yogis say, this is when you've cut yourself out of your life, you've cut the living energy, the prana of you out of the equation. The whole world suffers when we do that. So it doesn't mean that you have to go do anything dramatic, but it means to stay engaged, stay aware with where the world is and where you are within that world, the way that it is. That you're not without hope, you're not without empowerment, you're not without the ability to have a great loving impact right this second. You're not without that. And this is root chakra, right? Who am I? You're not destroyed because the world is in this moment of dissolving or destruction. And it's always in that moment. That's the thing is sometimes it feels bigger and closer to home, but it's always doing this. The world is always this way. It's why the yogis say, don't get caught up, especially when it feels very personal. Just feel what you feel, but then also go back to your root. How can I empower this world as it is right now with who I am right now? Not trying to be someone else. And again, when we don't feel that inner empowerment, we go back to mula bandha, pelvic floor. We go back to, can I start to raise the energy that is within me already? So that instead of it going all to our fear, that energy goes to Moving forward, it goes to progress, it goes to steadying, it goes to support. It goes back into living. And that feels like it's really hard sometimes. But this is taking life and using it as our teacher. This is taking death as part of life, using it as our teacher. Walk yourself back up onto hands and knees, please. Downward facing dog. So you are never without 
this is the Lakshmi teachings too, is you are never without the ability to enrich this world. So it's not us sitting here waiting for our vision of Lakshmi to come and give us what we want. That's not abundance. Lakshmi says, I've given you everything that you could ever want or need. It's right in front of you. But if you don't use it, if you don't engage with it, she says, then what good is it? I'm not going to give you more if you're not going to use what you have. Abundance includes that experience of dissolving. It includes pain. It, it includes everything that we don't want it to include. Feel your hands here. Bring your weight towards your knuckles. Feel that lifting of the ribs. Maybe even feel your pelvic floor, lowest part of your belly. Yeah, if this is the only pose that you do, fully present, fully conscious, do it. And then the right foot steps forward between the hands, please lunge. Good, drop the back knee, use a blanket there if you'd like, Anjaneyasana. Inhale, both arms up to the sky. This should be the second side, right? Yeah, okay. Because we stepped back with the right foot. Okay, left hand comes to outer right knee. Good, sweep that right arm back behind you. So you're twisting towards that front leg and then you're taking the right arm back behind you straight in line with your shoulder. Thumb facing up, so you have that open palm. Good. And the idea here is that you're not pulling the arm back, but that you're actually rotating your rib cage towards the back of your mat and then letting your hips move forward deeper into the lunge. Keep that knee pressing wide into the hand, but then extend through that right rib cage, right hand, like you're pulling towards the back of your mat. So your ribs are moving backwards as your pelvis moves forward. So try not to lean into the forwardness of the lunge. Pull back. Move your ribs laterally to the side. Nice, Elisa, you got it. Good, Tina. Good, Perry, watch that front knee. It's gotta be over the ankle, so pull your heel back. Good, you guys. And then unwind, sweep both arms forward and up alongside your ears. Yeah, Perry, your lunge is still a little long. You gotta keep pulling that heel back. Good, and then release the hands down to the floor, please. Nice job. Move your left hip back on top of the left knee. Take your right leg forward straight up on the heel. Ardha Hanumanasana. Walk the hands forward towards the ankle any amount. Again, you can have blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. And then really pay attention to pressing that heel down and dragging back. I know most of you have heard that cue 10 million times and maybe sometimes you do it and maybe sometimes you really don't. So press down and drag back so that you feel the actual uh, stabilizing energy of that leg. And focus here on lifting your tailbone up and back. So that subtle, almost arching of the lower spine, widening your sit bones, widening your inner thighs. You can even bend the front knee a little bit on purpose to be able to get into that a little more. Good. <laughs> your dogs are the best yogis. Good, you guys. Let your shoulders drop away from your ears here. Yep. Susan. And then start to walk your hands, both hands, any amount towards that baby toe edge of the foot. So you're walking your torso to the right. And again, your hands might not both come to the outside edge of your leg, but you can walk in that direction. So you turn from your waist, you turn from the pelvis. Good. Keep widening the inner thighs. Nice. Good, Marlene. Nice, Anju. Awesome. And then start to walk yourself all the way back towards center, please. Beautiful. Drag that heel back so you come back to the low lunge. Good. Lift your back knee, please. And then both hands inside the front foot. Walk to your left until you come to the center of your mat. Prasarita Padottanasana. Wide-legged forward fold. Good. And again, walking your hands forward in front of you. So it's like you're doing a wide-legged downward facing dog. And let your weight fall into your hands first. So as you walk your hands forward, let your weight fall forward into the hands. So your weight's gonna move towards the front of your feet, the balls of your feet. Good. And then pressing into your hands, you can start to draw that energy up again. Find that cupping action of your hands, the suctioning action. Draw the arm bones up and into the shoulders. And then from the tops of your thighs, start to draw back, lengthen the spine. Good, but don't let your armpits collapse. So don't get into that pushing backwards through the arms. You're not pushing backwards. You're keeping the chest lifted and you're drawing the tops of the thighs back and your tailbone up. Good, so there's an anchoring through the hands and then there's extension through the spine. 
Beautiful. And you'll find your heels, but you don't have to push backwards through the knees. Excellent, you guys. Feel the back of your throat lifting so your ears are in line with your upper arms. Yeah. Beautiful. And then walk your hands back in towards your feet, please. And then continue to walk your hands back underneath you. So it's like you're bringing your hands back behind your heels. Good. You can turn the fingers if you'd like. And you got to squeeze your legs here a little bit because now as you drop your weight in and you lift your tail up, again, that center of gravity, its relationship has shifted, right? So you have to draw in, pull up through the legs. Maybe again, squeeze pelvic floor. Good. If you're one of those individuals where your head is on the floor here, then maybe you don't feel like you have to squeeze as much. Still squeeze. Nice, sweetie. Good, you guys. And then slowly walk the hands forward again. Good. Walk back towards the top of your mat. Turn your right toes. Spin your back heel up. As you plant your hands, take the right leg up and back behind you into down dog split. Good. And then bend the knee, take your heel in towards your butt, keep your knee pointing down. So again, get your hips level with each other. You gotta lift higher through that left low belly to do that. Good, and you're press, uh, pressing that left heel, sorry, right heel a little higher up towards the sky. And then draw up through the arms, lift the back of your throat, take that little back bend. So the back of your heart lifts up. Nice, Allison, I like that. Good, nice Mia, point that knee down towards the floor. Excellent, you guys, keep drawing up and in and pressing through the hands, support. That's it, Judy. And then extend the leg, drop the head, long down dog split, and then release that right foot down to the floor, please. Excellent. And then drop down to your knees, do a little hip circling. Move your pelvis. Good, then move your pelvis the other way, circle your hips the other way. Nice. And then come back to center, please. Walk your hands back so you can bring your hands up to your hips. So a high kneeling lunge, a high kneeling lunge, that didn't make any sense. High kneeling position, hands at your hips, no lunge. Step your right leg wide to the right, please. Extend your right leg out to the right. Bring your heel in line with that left knee, foot flat to the floor, and then stretch your arms out wide, letter T. So this is gate pose. So the right leg is extended out to the right. Good, toes turned forward if you can, or at an angle. If you really love that being up on your heel, you can, but it changes the stretch on your hip. So I want it to be less of a hamstring stretch if you can, and more of that getting into your uh, glutes and side, side hip. So arms extended wide, slide the right arm down the right leg, take your left arm over the ear, Side body stretch. Good. Nice, you guys. And so there's a moment here where you're dropping that right hand onto the leg tentatively and saying, I'm only gonna go as far as I feel like going. So let that hand slide down a little further and then engage that left side rib cage. So you're not just letting gravity pull you here, but actually lift and arc into that left side. Pull your left armpit up, lift through the left side of your hip, press down through your left shin. Good. So you get every kind of ounce of opportunity from this pose, not just the weight of the pose pulling me here. Awesome, bring yourself all the way back up, please. Nice job, bring your hands down to the floor, keep that right leg extended and then walk your hands forward just a little bit. So it's almost like you're in that down dog position again with the leg extended. And again, if you were up on your heel before, you've got to turn the foot down flat for this one. Good, so make sure your hands are as wide as your shoulders. So Noreen, take your hands slightly wider. Teresa, hands slightly wider. Good, and same thing. You're drawing your hips up and back, letting your groins roll in towards the middle and back, pressing into your hands. Good, it's an awkward downward facing dog thing. Nice, Sandy. Awesome, you guys, try and lift that left side low belly just a little higher and wider, rolling that right inner thigh back. Good, and then walk your hands all the way back in, please. Take your right knee down to the floor and then come back up to that upright position, hands at your hips and switch to the other side. So take your left leg out and wide. Heel in line with the right knee. So make sure you move it forward far enough so that your heel, not your toes, but your heel is in line with your knee. Good, so Susan, it looks like that heel's gotta come forward a little bit more. So your hip points should be directly in line with each other. Lean a foot forward a little more. 
forward, forward, forward. There you go. Yep. And then slide the left hand down the left leg. Please take the right arm over the ear. Take your side stretch. Good. Noticing if you are one of those people who has the tendency that in every stretch, you push your ribs forward and shorten your lower back, draw your ribs in, feel yourself dropping down long through your sacrum, dropping down through your tail. And even here, that squeeze of the bent knee and the extended leg, squeeze your legs towards each other. And that helps inform you to then take that same squeezing in energy and lift your pelvic floor. And now really engage into that right side rib cage, arc that right armpit up towards the sky, lift through that right side hip. Good, so get longer because you are engaging, pulling through the muscles on that side of the body that are stretching. Good, and then come all the way back up. Really good, you guys. Take your hands down to the floor. Walk the hands forward into that awkward down dog position. Hands as wide as your shoulders. Good, so your left leg is still extended if it can be. Good, you got it. And then walk the arms forward so you have that long stretch of the spine. Make sure your ears stay in line with the upper arms. Good, you guys. And this is really an exercise in lifting that right side low belly, rolling the groins in and back, and figuring out what the heck that feels like in this awkward position. How do I widen my sit bones here? How do I keep the weight of my hips in line with my knee, not let it fall forward? So Ralph, pull the tops of the thighs back a little further. That's it. Nice, you guys. Good. And then walk your hands all the way back in, please. Awesome. Come back to hands and knees. So bring that left knee underneath the left hip. Beautiful. Come down onto your forearms, please. Good. Interlace your fingers. Make a little cup with your hands. I like to take one pinky inside because I don't like the weight of my uh, hands pressing into that tiny finger. So up to you but I like to take one pinky inside. So press down through that outer edge of your hands and your forearms, bring your armpits forward just a little bit further. So again, you have that sensation of my shoulders are really over top of my elbows. My armpits are on top of my elbows. Press down through those forearms. And then again, pull up through your side ribs. So as you're pushing down, you're also getting that sensation of lift. Now lift the back of your throat. So already you're really working the back here before you do anything with the legs. You're pushing through the hands, pulling up through the armpits, through the ribs, lift the back of your throat, look slightly forward if you can and press through the top of your head. Good, you're dragging subtly back on the elbows. Nice, now stretch your legs back into a forearm plank pose. And as you stretch your legs back, draw your low belly in, feel your pubis bone or your pelvic bones pulling up towards your ribs. Engage that pelvic floor again. You think it can't possibly matter in this pose. Engage it. Feel yourself in the deep, deep low belly, squeezing in and up and armpits forward again over your elbows. Good, Valerie, take those legs back further so you can drop your hips lower. Nice, you guys, keep breathing. Keep the back of your throat lifting. Don't tense your jaw. Nice. Walk your feet forward any amount, taking your butt towards the sky, forearm dog or dolphin. You can let the head drop here because the keeping that gaze lifted is gonna be increasingly harder the more you walk your feet in. But keep pressing back, pulling up through the tops of the thighs. Excellent. And then drop the knees down to the floor, please. Child's pose, knees nice and wide. Hips back to your heels. You're thinking you want to know when the next time I'm teaching inversions is so you can avoid class immediately after. <laughs> we talk a lot in yoga about being able to be aware of this body without being, without thinking that the body is all that we have. But most of us, we really spend so much time disconnected from what's happening, what's happening inside of our bodies. We're disconnected even from being able to see what our mind is doing in relationship to the world. We just know that when something feels bad, we either try and change it, make it something else, or we run, distract ourselves. The practice of yoga is to consistently stop running.
So we're asked to engage not just with the crown, where we think that's our way out. I can get to that very spiritual etheric place where none of this will hurt me anymore. Yogi said, that's not how it works. You experience the crown, you experience everything. And the same awareness is there in your root. Can't have one without the other. So go to your root. Who am I in this world as it is? Why am I here? Because it's not a mistake. Karmically, energetically, we say it is never a mistake. Because you are here in the world as it is because this is where your enlightenment is. This is where your awareness is. This is where your fulfillment is. This is your teacher, this world. So empower it and let it empower you. You are not without teaching of Lakshmi. Nice, you guys. Walk yourself all the way back up, please. Onto hands and knees. Oy, oy, oy. I know. Take your right knee in front of your left knee, please, in front of you. And then separate the feet nice and wide and walk yourself back until your butt comes to the floor between your feet. So you're coming into Gomukhasana. So if that variation of coming into it from that walking backwards doesn't work, then you're just stacking your right knee on top of your left, taking the feet nice and wide. Make sure you have any props that you need underneath your seat. Good. Excellent, you guys. Engage the feet, so flex the feet. Awesome. And then walk your left hand out wide to the left beyond your hip. Bend that elbow, drop down. Take the right arm over your ear, extend. Nice melody, good Diane. And as you're extending, drop that right butt cheek back down to the floor. So again, you're engaging that whole right side, not just trusting that gravity is going to do something for you. Nice, Lena, good Daniel. Really good, you guys. Draw your ribs back. Find that right rib cage opening a little wider. Right armpit open a little wider. Wow. Beautiful. Bring yourself all the way back up to center, please. Good. And if you can here, walk your hands straight forward. So take a forward fold. If that's not possible, keep your hands just alongside your hips. Sit nice and tall and press your seat down into the floor. Good. So if you're not folding forward, you're staying upright, but you're pressing your seat down. So you still have this sensation of lengthening your spine where you can breathe a little deeper into the lower belly, into the lower back. Good. And the answer is for what do we do in the world right now can't come as easily from our mind because our mind is overwhelmed, right? It's always overwhelmed. But we can ask the important questions from that place where our awareness is in the pelvis. Who am I? Where? Why am I here? And what is it that I want to give to the world right now? What is it important for me to do right now? And the answers might shock you, right? That your body might say, you got to go do this. You got to disconnect from that. It might say something simple, like go color a picture or go take a walk. It might say, go take a nap. Or it might say, get out of your house and go talk to someone. It might say, go take a class. It might say, go bake cookies. I don't know. But the answers, when they don't come from our head, they come from somewhere else. Empower us. Walk yourself back in, please. Good. Unwind your legs. Stretch them out if you need. And then we're going to come to the second side. We won't do anything fancy today. So just as you're ready, stacking your left knee on top of your right, Gomukhasana. So step, uh, taking the feet nice and wide to the outer hips. Again, sometimes it's easier to be in that forward position and then walk your hips back. Good. So left knee on top of right. You got it. And then start to walk your right hand out wide from your right hip, dropping down through that elbow, stretch the left arm over your ear, side body stretch. Nice, nice. Good, trying to press that left sit bone down to the floor. 
Good, Andy. Nice, Mia. Got it, Marlene. Good, Anju. Keep your feet awake. That's a fun, Allison. We're actually going there next. So I just, <laughs> I mean, where your legs are, we're going there next. So, you know, go Mukasana. So knee over knee is where we're at. There you go. <laughs> Excellent, you guys. Walk yourself all the way back up. And then forward fold if you can. If forward folding is not an option, hands alongside you. And again, if you're not forward folding, that's perfect. But press down through your sit bones so that you still feel that you are opening through the lower spine. You're not just wondering why I can't do more that someone else is doing. Right, so you engage with what you have right here. You press your sit bones wide and down. And you feel yourself lifting maybe again through the pelvic floor. Sometimes we imagine, right, what it would be like to forward fold. Our body doesn't wanna do it. It's not ready to do it, but I can imagine that length of my spine. Good. I'm gonna walk yourself all the way back up, please. Nice, unwind the legs, please stretch the legs out in front of you. Good, give them a little shake. And then inhale the arms up to the sky, Paschimottanasana, dig your heels down and drag back. Then bow forward, reaching for the ankles, feet, whatever, whatever your hands can find. <laughs> and even if your hands are just finding the floor and they're in, at the level of your knees or higher, don't worry, just let your hands find something. Good. Just one more breath, press down through your heels. You again, feel the engagement of the legs. And then walk yourself all the way up. So your last hip openers, we're coming into Agni Stambhasana. So right shin is going to stack on top of left. So bend both knees, taking that left shin in front of you, stack the right heel or the right foot on top of the left knee. So you have that stacked position on the legs. Yep, so legs are cross-legged. If that position of having the ankle on top of the knee does not work for you, then you can widen a little bit, take the heel inside the knee crease or right shin in front of left with the feet flexed, right? So lots of options. Also use props. So here you're not knee on top of knee, you are ankle to knee. So your shins are stacked, like a double pigeon we sometimes call it. Got flexing the feet. Nice. And then again, same thing here, either fold forward if that is available. And if it's not, stay where you are, feeling yourself pressing down through your seat, keeping your feet awake and allowing your pelvis to settle, sending your groins down to the floor. So you're still lengthening your spine. You're still engaging with how your legs are connected to your pelvis. Nice, you guys. And if you are upright and it feels good to do a little stretching of your neck here, you can always drop the right ear towards the right shoulder using the right hand to give a little extra weight there. Maybe extending the left fingertips out on the floor so you have that length on the arm that stretches the neck in the opposite direction. Right, you are never without the ability to do great things, whatever your limitations are. But if you don't take the opportunity to do what you can, then it will always feel like there's nothing that you've done, nothing you can do. If you're doing that next stretch, come on back up, try the other side, dropping the left ear towards the left shoulder, left hand comes up to hold. If you were forward folded and now you're tired of that, you can always come upright. Good. Yeah, take one more breath on this side and walk yourself back up, please. If you are in the forward fold, good, unwind your legs. So move that right knee a little wider to the right as you release the pose. Give your legs a little shake as they need. And then go ahead and switch to the other side. So now the left shin is going to cross on top of the right. And again, ankle to knee is the big stretch or you can move the feet a little wider or you can have left shin in front of right with the feet flexed. 
be honest with yourself. One side might be completely different than the other. So you'd use the appropriate position. And then flex your feet a lot. So again, the ankles are engaged, the feet are engaged. And then either walk forward if walking forward is available. And if it's not, stay upright. And if you're upright, continue to press down through your sit bones. Feel yourself lifting through the lowest part of your belly. So you get this sensation again of widening and lengthening your sacrum. Good. You're part of the point of hip openers is that we start to get that stickiness where our uh, legs and our pelvis become one piece, right? That they're stuck together. So hip openers are not just for those big muscles of the thighs or the hips, but it's to help us be able to work with that stickiness so that the pelvis can move around the legs. The legs have more room to rotate in the pelvis, in the hip socket. And when we can't fold forward, often that is what's stopping us, right? Is that there's compression in there, it's too stuck. So staying upright is perfect for that. And you just keep widening through the legs, you keep widening through the pelvis and that space will start to open up. And maybe it becomes a forward fold at some point, maybe it never does. And it doesn't matter because the practice is to make space. The practice is to engage with what you have and to make the most of it, to make it a full experience of living. I love it if you're upright and you're doing those neck stretches again, great can't do them too much. At least I don't think you can. You'd have to try hard. Good, you guys. You know, this is an intense pose, but when we work with the big muscles of the hips and the legs, you got to give them time to settle. So as intense as it is, breathe with it. You can always change coming upright if you are forward folding. You can always use more props. Good. And then nothing lasts forever. So go ahead and walk yourself back up. <laughs> Lucky you, nothing lasts forever. And then unwind the legs, drawing that left knee nice and wide as you stretch the legs out in front of you. Good, give the legs a little shake. And then again, forward fold here of your choice. You can keep the legs straight or you can take them a little wider if that feels good. Engage your feet and forward fold. Nice, give Lisa a nice Sarah, I like that. Good Perry, it's Melody. Good Lori, good Andy. All right, and then walk yourself all the way back up, please. I'm gonna give you a moment to go upside down if you'd like. So you've had pretty good preparation for headstand. If you would like to do headstand and you have a wall available to do that. Otherwise, any other inversion that you choose, handstand is great, forearm balance is great, shoulder stand is, they're all great. Shoulder stand option. Legs up the wall if you're just done <laughs> and that's all you want, legs up the wall. You don't have a wall, lay on your back and put your legs in the air or place a block underneath your sacrum. So find some version of upside down that works for you. Good. Remembering that even in upside down, as you're setting yourself up, as remember that energy of the lowest part of your pelvis, engaging the pelvic floor, squeezing in and up even helps in inversions. Nice, beautiful, Lori. Nice Diane, nice Andy. And Mia, that's a great alternative. <laughs> nice Anju. Good Allison. Nice Teresa.
part of why if you are someone who likes inversions, part of the reason we do like them is that that whole body engagement, everything clarifies. We do, we feel empowered, right? It's an exciting thing to be standing on your head or on your hands. Requires you to focus in a way that you don't do when you're upright, when everything is the way that you're used to and you think that you're in control of it. So really draw your rib cage in everybody who's upside down. So you get that sensation again of drawing the pelvic bones and the ribs towards each other. Engage that low belly, middle belly. Really good. Nice, Teresa. Beautiful, Lena. Got it, Ralph. Excellent. And then for those of you who are really comfortable and you're upside down, you want to play a little bit. Start to bend your knees in towards your chest. So tucking the knees in, but keep your hips right on top of your shoulders. So you're just drawing the knees in towards your chest and pause there. Don't bring them all the way down. And then send your legs back up. You're like, nope. <laughs> Good. There's always more to do, right? If you have become really comfortable in your inversions, come talk to me. I'll give you exciting things to play with. Excellent, you guys take your last couple of breaths and you're upside down. Nice, Allison, I like that. Good, also fun if you are coming down from your inversion and you wanna play, take your legs out wide to a straddle so that as you are tucking through your pelvis, you're actually straddling and coming down feet to the floor. Yeah, then you still gotta fold from the waist, yep. And again, if that feels like a bad idea, you'll bring your knees back together and come down the way that you like. That was interesting, Andy, to do that from, from a shoulder stand. Nice, Lena, good. Good, find your way down if you are still up. Beautiful work. Take a moment if you have been in headstand or handstand, resting either in child's pose or sitting upright. If you're in shoulder stand, let yourself take a moment on your back. Good. And then everyone's going to find their way onto their back so that you can extend your legs. So if you've been in legs up the wall and you intend to not just stay there all day <laughs> and come on down headspace center of the room. If you are in the room with me, if you're at home, however you want to be. And coming down to your backs. Good. And draw the right knee in towards your chest, please. Squeeze it in. Then lift your shoulders up off the floor. So round into your shoulders, like you're going to bring your knee towards your nose and your nose towards your knee. Press that left thigh down to the floor. Good. And then slowly release the shoulders back down to the floor. Nice. Bring the right knee across your body into a spinal twist. Right arm extends out wide. Again, reaching for that sensation, right? As you extend out through that right arm. Even if your fingertips are just barely touching the floor, but extend out through that arm and then play with the gaze, right? Sometimes looking towards that hand feels like the best thing, but maybe turn your gaze the other way. So you're looking away from the hand and see if that gives you a different stretch on your neck. Good. And then optional here, just for a moment, if you want to bend that extended leg, the bottom leg into a quad stretch, Bend the left knee, kick your heel in, reach with that right hand for the foot or the ankle. Good. And then slowly release the legs. Come all the way back towards center, please. Go ahead, releasing that right leg down towards the floor. Hug your left knee in towards your chest. Squeeze it in, lift your shoulders up. So again, you're bringing your knee towards your nose, your nose towards your knee, extending that right leg down to the floor. Good. And then release the shoulders, really nice, Daniel. Good, and then bring that knee across the body, spinal twist. Nice, Maureen. 
and then really reaching through that left arm. So again, I want you to feel that stretch, not just where you might get stuck in your shoulder, but try and feel the length of your arm. So extend out through your fingertips, try and stretch your forearm. Right, try and stretch your biceps. You know, if you think your arms are not very strong, you have biceps, stretch them. Play with the gaze, looking towards the hand, looking away from the hand. And if you'd like to add that quad stretch, then you can bend the right knee, kick your heel in, reach for the foot or the ankle, or just bend the knee and don't reach for the foot, right? That's always an option too. And then slowly release both legs, please, coming back towards center. Hugging both knees in towards the chest. One last hug. Forehead up to meet your knees, squeeze. And then as you release, extend the legs out in front of you. Take the arms alongside you, palms facing up. Let yourself rest in Shavasana, making sure you have whatever props, whatever clothes you need, stay warm. Entire text, Akatu Upanishad, I choose death as my teacher. It's through comprehending death dissolving that I begin to understand the true nature of living, I begin to understand the limitlessness of existence by engaging with this limitation that scares me the most. So let your breath become long and deep so that you feel that there is that giving and receiving you, your limited form to that infinite form, the infinite back into the limited, the finite. So that, that relationship is exactly what it should be. Always just breathing in and breathing out.
very gently bring the awareness back to your breath. The body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. As you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Take a moment there before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. And bringing your hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, letting the fingertips really touch. So there's a feeling of not just placing the hands there, but engaging the hands together. And we choose life as our teacher. We choose even the aspects of life that scare us as our teacher. We choose death as our teacher, the world in front of us as our teacher. And we begin every day doing what we think is the best thing that we can do. And then life changes a direction and says, no, you got to go here now. And now you got to go there. And now it's time to do this. And now it's time to awaken that. And now it's time to study this. And now it's time to dissolve that. And so by the end of the day, we're doing something completely different than what we thought we were going to do. By the end of the week or the year, we're like, wow, how did I get here? But this is what it means, the yogis say, to be in that dance of the world, is to engage with the world as it is, is you're never going anywhere. All there is, is you constantly giving what is in you to this world to empower it, and you taking from this world what empowers what is already deeply embedded in you. And so that's all you're doing. Don't worry about where it's going to go. All you can be is where you are. But if every day life is your teacher, Whatever is happening in the world in front of you is your teacher, is you will be led here now, now there. And your mind doesn't have to figure it out. You can keep asking that question deep inside, who am I? And today, what is it important for me to offer to the world? What is it important for me to offer to myself to be in the world? And that's our flow of Lakshmi. It never disappears, it steadies us. And that's how we can be in the world, even when it's falling apart. And then we can be, still be in the world as it puts itself back together and then falls apart again. So everything will fall away. And at the same time, you never are losing anything. You are never without. It's a teaching of Lakshmi. So choose the world as your teacher, because this is where you are and you're not here by mistake. And even if the best you can do is you breathe in and you breathe out, do that with your full attention. The world will benefit. Deep breath in for the sound of Om. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Really great work today. You worked so hard. I noticed. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you soon. I will see you when I see you.